Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. It is the truth. We do receive it, written in our heart, written in our mind. Thank you for the revelation of it. We're taking hold of it, the endurers of it, and we thank you it will bring forth much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. Most recently, we've been, we've been talking about denying yourself, living unto God, denying your own ways, putting Him first place in your life and His Word. We talked about being a doer of the Word, continual doer of the Word, and getting the counsel of God. And last week, we talked about rightly dividing the Word of Truth and how we're to seek the Lord acceptably in His sight, as well as walking worthy of the Lord, which is mandatory, having eternal ramifications for you. Today we're going to talk about conquering the lies of the devil against you. The enemy is your adversary, it's the Satan, and he is seeking to deceive you and lead you away from the truth. John chapter 8, verse 44. It says, You are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, abode not in the truth, because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. You must know that the devil is a liar and he will bring lies to you to try to deceive you away from the truth. We see what happened to people who once were serving God but made a big, made a big mistake. Romans chapter 1 verse 21 says, Because that when they knew God, they knew God at one point, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. And they went down a path of destruction. And one of the things they did, they changed the truth of God into a lie. And they worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, which is blessed, who is blessed forever. We cannot change the truth of God into a lie, contrary to the Word of God. Many people have done that, ignoring the Word. They got their own commandments of men, traditions of men, and their own ways. And they end up worshiping and serving themselves instead of the Creator. We cannot allow the enemy to deceive us away from the truth. In Acts chapter 5, the devil got to Ananias and Sapphira. They made a big mistake. And Peter, confronting them in Acts 5, 3, said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, to keep back part of the price of the land? They thought they were going to trick God, and deceive him. They lied. You cannot allow lies to come in. And we're going to see as we go down these last days, and when the man of sin comes on the scene, which he will, he's going to be revealed, as we see back here, in verse 3, let no man deceive you that by any means, for the day shall not come, talking about the day when Jesus is going to come back and catch up the church to meet the Lord near, except there come a falling away first. Unfortunately, there's going to be a falling away because people won't walk after the truth. They'll follow lies. They'll follow their own agenda instead of the word of God. And the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, he will be revealed. And what is going, what's going to happen? We see with all deceivableness of righteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. They didn't receive the word and put the word first place in their life. Anybody that will not put the word first place in their life is on the path of being deceived, the deceivableness of unrighteousness. That's a path of perishing instead of being saved. And for this cause, because of not receiving the truth and believing, believing the, the, the ways of the enemy, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And they will believe that lie. That they all might be damned or judged who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The Bible declares this unrighteousness and lawlessness is going to abound. We cannot allow ourselves to walk any of these ways. We must understand the truth, and we must also understand Satan's lies that would come against us to try to deceive us. So how are we going to know the truth? It's the Word. Everything has to be checked out in line with the Word. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. The Word of God is the truth, and it will produce the work of sanctification in your life to make you holy before the Lord as you walk in it. 
everybody's to come to the knowledge of the truth. So that means we need to get in the Word and study the Word. Over in 1 Timothy chapter 2, and verse 4, God makes it very clear. He will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge. This word knowledge, epigenosis, means the precise, correct knowledge of the truth. That's why we got to study the Word, we got to know the Word. We got to rightly divide the Word of truth. We cannot be those who don't know the Word. God wants you to know the Word of God exactly, precisely, correctly. As we know the truth, then we're going to walk in the ways of victory. And then he comes down and speaks again, this time in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, which we saw last week. We are to study, which really means to be diligent, as Young's brings out, to present thyself approved unto God. Everybody has to present themselves and to be diligent to pre present yourself to be approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We can't have error. We can't be deceived. We can know the truth because the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us into all of the truth. But one of the things important, as you hear the word, you must be a doer of the word. John chapter 3, verse 21, is very revealing. He that doeth truth cometh to the light. Not just one who heard it. It's the one who does it. What you hear, you must be a doer of and put it in operation if you're going to come to the truth. Well, there's lots of people that learn, but they never come to the truth. We even see that declared in 2 Timothy 3, verse 7. Ever learning but never able to come to the truth, the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because they didn't do it. They didn't do the Word. Only those that do truth will come to the light. These were never able to come to the precise, correct knowledge of the truth, even though they learn a lot. Don't be one of those that learn, but don't do the Word and put it in operation to see it work in your life and bring forth promises and bring forth change and bring forth the fruit of God's Word. Every one of us need to put the Word of God in first place. And we can't be like those who think that they're okay with the Lord just because they're born again and they've heard the Word. First John 2, 4, he says, He that saith, I know him, oh, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, he's not a doer of the Word, he's a liar, and the truth's not in him. Many people are just hearers, but they're not doers. They know some commandments, but they don't keep them. We've got to keep the commandments. That means you put your doer of the word. If not, God says we are a liar, and the truth is not in us. Well, how are we going to come to the truth? Just because you heard the word, remember, doesn't produce the truth. It's those who do truth, do the word, that's going, is going to bring us to the, to the light. Doing the truth brings us to the light. And so how do we get to this place? Because what's the truth going to do? It's going to produce freedom and liberty and victory in your life. John 8, 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Who's a real disciple? Not just the one who's born again. The one who continues in the word of God. And then what happens? You shall know the truth. Meaning you don't know the truth till you're a disciple. You don't know the truth if you're not continuing the word. Because when you know the truth, what's it going to do? The truth shall make you free. Because you are seeing the reality of the word of God bring forth the promise and work in your life as God will produce his word and watch over it. The enemies are liars and they try to deceive you. The devil is a liar. And you must know that everything that comes against you that's contrary to the Word of God, it's orchestrated by the devil in some capacity. And you need to know that God wants you to know that they're all liars. Deuteronomy 33, 29, Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee? O people saved by the Lord. We're saved by the Lord. The shield of thy help, and who's the sword of thy excellency. Thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. You need to know everything the devil tries to tell you is a lot that's not true, it's a lie. They're found liars unto you, and you shall tread upon their high places. You are to put the enemy underfoot in your life. 
we must conquer all specific lies against us. Over in 1 Corinthians, chapter 12. The devil tells you all kinds of lies. You must conquer every single one of them. He may tell you you're insignificant and not important to God. He's a liar. You are important to God. You are necessary. You are important to Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20. But now are they many members, yet but one body. The eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to me more feeble are necessary. Every member is important and you are important to God. We can never say to another person that you're not important. Everybody's important. And notice it even says, I've no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet I have no need of thee. Who is the head of the body? Jesus. That means Jesus considers you and I necessary. You're important. God wants to do a great work in you. He wants to use you. He wants to accomplish great things in you and through you. You must put him first place and make him Lord of all. You are important. Do not think that you're insignificant. God can use you to do tremendous things. If he can just find someone who will give their heart to them. We see a scripture over in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Don't ever think that you're all alone, and that God's not with you. It's all a lie. Hebrews 13, verse 5, Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God's not leaving you. He's not forsaking you. You could leave him, but he's not leaving you. If you will stay with him, he will be with you always. You are not alone. God is with you. In fact, he has come to dwell on the inside of you. And the day you got born again, receiving Jesus as personal Lord and Savior, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. You now are the temple of God. He says, What agreement at the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. He's come to dwell in you. He's abiding in you. That's God on the inside of you through the Spirit of Christ. But he also wants to walk in you, to walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. You need to let them be God over you. Put him first place. Make him Lord of all. Never believe any lies of the devil that he's not with you or that he's left you or that you're all alone. He is a liar. Don't ever believe that just committing a few sins is no big deal. No. Committing sin is a big deal. God wants you to know you can conquer all sin in your life. Proverbs 5. Verse 22 says, His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. It will hold you captive. You cannot allow yourself to be held captive by sin. When sin has no dominion over you any longer, you have been redeemed. You now can walk free from sin. How long can you live? How, long, how should we longer live in sin any longer, it's having been set free from it by what Jesus Christ has accomplished? You're to live after the Spirit. What happens if you continue to walk in sin? See, the devil will make you think, that oh, it's, you know, God will forgive me of my sins, everything will be fine. Well, you've got to understand, the sin is taking a toll upon you. Hebrews 3.13 says, Exhort one another daily, while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is causing, causing a hardening in your heart. It is affecting you adversely. You are being deceived by it. The devil's deceiving you and getting a hold of your heart, getting a hold of your mind, taking you down a wrong path. Now we're being hardened through it. We cannot allow sin to come upon us and think that continue to sin and think it's not going to have any kind of ramifications. No. Hebrews 10, 26. For if we sin willfully... We know what we're doing. We're choosing to do it. After that we have received the knowledge, the precise correct knowledge of the truth, so we, we heard the truth, we heard the word, we received the knowledge of the truth, 
and then we sin willfully, oh, I'll, I'll, God, I'll, I'll just confess my sin and there'll be no repercussions for it. No, nah, it's not going to work. There remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a fearful looking for of judgment of fiery indignation will devour the adversaries. We cannot walk in the ways of sin. Remember the man who got healed at the pool of Bethesda? John chapter 5, verse 14, Jesus sought him out in the temple. He said, afterward, Jesus finds him in the temple, and he said to him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. Otherwise, the ramifications of sin will be upon you, and you will be in worse shape. That's why we got to make sure we're dealing with sin and walking con in line with the Word and, and never allowing ourselves to walk contrary to the Word and give place to sin. You can conquer every sin in your life. Hebrews 12.1 He says, Wherefore, seeing we're also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. Is there a sin or sins that so easily beset you? They just seem to get you and take you captive and you keep falling into them. You can conquer every single one. Lay aside that, that sin that so easily besets you. Let us run with patience, steadfast. It's the race that's set before us as we're looking unto Jesus, turning our ways. The word looking is turning your eyes away from other things, if you notice below, and fixing them on something, which is Jesus on the word. Don't let yourself be wandering every which way. No. Get your eyes on the Word. He's Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And regarding dealing with sin, he said in verse 4, You've not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. You are to fight against sin. You are to resist it like an enemy coming in to try to take you captive and destroy you. You need to resist it. And you're going to resist it with the Word of God. So you do not give place to the enemy. Well, you might say, well, well, if I sin, nobody's really ever going to find me. Ask not, it'll be okay. No. Again, we won't get away. Numbers chapter 32, verse 23. These are the guys who wouldn't engage in warfare. If you don't engage in warfare, it's sin. Remember, we'll go back a few verses here. When Moses told them all to go armed before the Lord to war. And they were all supposed to go over, go armed to drive out all the enemies. And the land would be subdued before the Lord and then they'd return and they'd be guiltless before the Lord. I mean, if we don't, we'll be guilty before him. And then he goes on and he says, if you will not do so, behold, you've sinned. Meaning if you don't engage in the warfare and drive out the enemies and possess the land, we've sinned. Because God's given us a land, and he's given us the means to go in and possess it. And be sure your sin will find you out. <laughs> oh, God's going to know it. It's going to find you out. We must know that you and I are not going to escape the consequences of not doing the Word of God. And the devil will do everything possible to get you off of doing the commandments of the Lord and walk in the ways of compromise and sin. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. Nobody else knows it but you and me for about ourselves. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. We're going to be judged for every single thing. In fact, we already know what's going to happen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the Bible declares what is going to happen for every one of us. Verse 10, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. Oh, just the good things? No. According to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, He's going to receive for all the things that he's been doing. We've got to make sure that we are doing what is right in the sight of the Lord. Well, the devil will throw a lie at you and say, well, everybody else is doing it, you know. So? Well, it doesn't matter. Just because everybody else does things or everybody else is walking not, not right, doesn't, <laughs> that shouldn't have any effect upon you whatsoever. 
That's a little excuse the devil brings you. You know, someone's telling, trying to help you, you know, come to a place of repentance. Well, you do this and you do that, you know, and thinking all these kind of attitudes. No. We've got to realize, we've got to deal with all these things. Look what happens when we walk in sins and iniquities. Isaiah 59, verse 2, your iniquities have separated you and your God, between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. That means God doesn't hear every prayer, unless you've dealt with the sin. And so the devil lies to you and tries to get you into sin. He's got you in a place where you just shut you off from hearing from God, or from him hearing, hearing your prayers, and seeing him manifest himself in your life. Remember, it is very deceitful and is trying to deceive you. The devil will tell you, well, it's, it's okay to do this and do that. Compromise a little bit here, there. Yield to the flesh once in a while. No, it's not. Matthew 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. The straight gate is the word stenos, which means really narrow. It's the narrow way. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Every other way but the narrow way is going down to lead to destruction. Many there be which go in thereat. The many are going that way. Because straight or narrow is the gate, again. And then it says narrow. The word is not narrow. It's the word thlibo, which means pressed. Pressed is the way that leads unto life. You can only walk the straight way. The enemy will try to get you to walk any way but the narrow straight way. And the enemy will press you to try to get you to turn away from the right way. Now, narrow or compressed is the way that leads unto life. Few there be that find it. The devil will attack you and press you to try to get you not to walk in the way of the Lord. You've got to make the decision you're going to walk in the way of the Lord. Only few there be that find it that are going to enter in that leads unto life, as it says. We can't be like those who... Either we're walking right for a while, and then, you know, we let the devil get to us. Matthew 7, verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. We know people by their fruits. God knows us by our fruits. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Just because you say he's Lord doesn't mean you're going to enter in. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the one who's doing continuously, this is a present tense verb, doeth, which means, the present tense means continuous, ongoing action. He's continually doing the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, that's not a few, that's a lot. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, in my name have cast out devils, in thy name done many wonderful works? These are Christians. You can't do anything in the name of Jesus unless you're born again. You can't prophesy without the Holy Spirit. You can't cast out demons unless you are right with the Lord and you have authority. You can't do the many wonderful works unless you're walking right with the Lord. And you know His Word. You're operating the authority and the power of God. So these were Christians. Many people try to say these weren't Christians. <laughs> They're wrong. These guys were Christians. Verse 23, Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The word work is what they were doing then, working, present tense, ongoing action. And what were they working? Anemia, which is the word for lawlessness. They were working lawlessness continually. We cannot be working anything contrary to God's word. God's word is the laws of the Spirit, the laws of Christ is what we're under. We are to walk and work the, the ways of the Word of God, not working lawlessness. These guys are going to hear, depart from me. Others will try to, the devil try to throw a lie and say, you know, it's, you know, it, it's okay. Your, your conscience will get to the place where you think that it's not a big deal. It's easier to do the sin the second time and third time and fourth time. It just isn't, your conscience just, thinks, just seems to think it's okay to do those kind of things. There isn't that strong conviction if you keep doing it. No. What happens? Your conscience gets defiled. Titus 1.15, under the pure, all things are pure. 
but unto those that are defiled. They've been defiled and stained because of sin. And believing is nothing pure. Even their mind and their conscience is defiled. That's what happens to people. And they think of, that's how they can justify doing things that are wrong. Which at one time they knew they would never do anything and now they seem like they fall into it so easily. <laughs> their mind and their conscience gets defiled. They profess they know God, but in works they deny Him. You see, your works are important. Your works show forth your faith. They show forth whether you're following the Lord. They show, show forth whether you're doing the Word or not, whether you're obedient. In works they deny them being abominable. God says they're abominable, disobedient, and in every good work reprobate or not approved. That's what the devil will try to get you to do. This is what happens to people that won't do the Word, and their conscience will get affected adversely. In fact, we even see the statement talking about it 1 Timothy chapter 4, where the Spirit speaks expressly in the latter times that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They get deceived and they start following things that are wrong. Doctrines of devils, false teachings, speaking lies about hypocrisy, hypocrites, say one thing one minute, go and do another, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Uh, their conscience is not convicting them any longer. It's got seared with a hot iron. Well, we cannot allow that to happen. God wants your conscience to be pure and to be cleansed. And God will do that through, you confess the sins, and the blood of Jesus Christ applied will cleanse you, cleanse you from all sin and also purge your conscience. Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge? That means make clean your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. God will cleanse you from all those things, but you better make sure you're not walking those dead works any longer. We've got to walk in the ways of, this, of the Lord. Put the Word of God first place. The devil also come along and just condemn you over all the bad things you did in the past. Bring guilt upon you, condemnation. Does God bring guilt and condemnation? No. Not whatsoever. He will convict you to bring you to repentance, but he does not bring you to the place of condemning you. He calls you to repentance, of course. John 8.10, this is the woman taken the act of adultery. Jesus lifted up himself, saw none, but the woman said to him, Woman, where are those thine accusers? He said, Who, Whoever is without sin cast the first stone. And they all had to walk away. Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. Jesus said unto her, neither, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. He never condemns you, but he does tell you to quit sinning. Because if you continue to walk in sin, you're going to be walking down a road of destruction. We must turn away from it. Do not ever listen to the devil's bringing up lies of the past sins if you have truly confessed those sins and repented and turned from them and beat you over the head over the things you've done in the past. Romans 8.1, There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Notice there's no condemnation as long as you're walking the right path, of course. If you're not walking the right path, you will be condemned. You know, the modern translations that don't follow the Texas Receptus, that have followed the Westcott and Hort line ones, most all the ones, they eliminated some of this. They have a period after this. There's therefore, no con there's therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, period. <laughs> they didn't want to be accountable. They thought we can, just, we're, we can be free from condemnation, period. You look it up in some of those ones, the, mo the ones that are not Texas Receptus related, King James, or the New King James Version, or Young's, those are all Texas Receptus. You look up in the NAS, you look up in the, all, all these other ones, you, they're all in ESV, all these ones, they stop after this. Or they have it in some kind of quotes later that it's not in the original, supposedly. It's a lie. No. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You've got to walk after the spirit. If you walk after the flesh, what are you doing? You're walking in sin. Are you going to be condemned? Yes, you are. Until you come to the place of true repentance in our life. The devil, though, will try to bring guilt upon you. No, don't listen to that. Say you're not good enough. He also will try to bring up Sins of the past, 
The devil, his lies, try to keep reminding you. He'll give you dreams. You'll wake up in the morning, he'll give you a negative kind of thoughts. You'll be going through your day and these thoughts of past things will come to you. You've got to cast that down. You cannot let that get you. If you have truly confessed your sins, and if you have truly turned away from iniquity and you're now walking in righteousness, your sins are washed away. God does not remember your sins anymore, so it's not God bringing them up to you. It says in Ezekiel 18, verse 21, if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he's committed and keep all my statutes, if he's now walking in the right way, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions, all the things he's ever done that he's committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. The word mentioned is remembered or recalled to mind. So who's bringing them to your mind? The devil. You need to cast those thoughts down and not give place to any of that. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. But you do also need to know that if you are righteous and you turn away from your righteousness and commit iniquity and do according to all the abominations the wicked man does, are you going to live? No. It doesn't work. God washes away all my sins and everything's fine and doesn't remember them anymore. But then if I go back into sin, well, that, that doesn't count. No. You're, you're, what's going to happen to you? All his righteousness that he's done shall not be remembered or recalled to mind. It's as if you never were. That's the reason why he said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who are working lawlessness. Because he wasn't walking right any longer. In his trespass that he's trespassed, in his sin of your sin, in them shall he die. But don't let the devil bring up the thoughts of, of the sins of the past. Psalms 103. You've got to know these scriptures so you can defeat the attacks of the enemy. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. They are eliminated. They have been removed. We even see over in Hebrews, in chapter 8, in verse 12. It's an important verse for you to know. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities or their lawlessness, anomia, will I remember no more. Anything that's bringing up uh, the sins, iniquities, lawlessness, and you have truly confessed the sin and repented and are walking in the way of the Lord, God's not bringing them to you. That's the devil, because God remembers them no more. Oh, the devil will come and bring lies to you and say, well, God's not going to bring anything good for you. He's a liar. You've got to know what the scriptures say. Acts 3.26 Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. That's right. God wants to bring blessings upon you. He brings healing. He brings deliverance. He brings peace. He brings prosperity. He brings restoration. God wants to bless you. Blessings are to come on you and overtake you in your life. Of course, in turning every way from you from his iniquities, you can't walk in sin and think you're going to get blessed. It's not going to happen. Sin has to be eliminated. And your walk is so important. You can't just have a good attitude, you know, and, and not have any real true repentance in your life, which is shown by your walk. Psalms 84, verse 11. The Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. If you will walk uprightly, be a doer of his word, walk in line with the way of righteousness consistently in your life, no more giving place to sin and backsliding for a moment, then he's not going to hold anything back from you whatsoever. Well, you know, a lot of times people have gotten mad at God because of things that have happened, wondering why God allowed such and such. First of all, you've got to know who's bringing the evil stuff. John 10.10, 10, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come, that's Jesus speaking, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. What does he want? He wants to bring forth 
life unto you. Now this is conditional though, based on you walking in line with the word. Because this is a subjunctive mood verb, which is a conditional statement. That they might have life if they meet the conditions. Of course, you've got to walk in line with the word if you're going to see the life of God. Otherwise, the enemy is going to be able to get to you. And this is supposed to be present tense, ongoing action of you having life. And you're back here to have it more abundantly in your life. The devil is a liar. Don't ever blame God for your problems. You must understand, God has given you a free will. We can never say, well, the devil made me do it. No, the devil didn't make you do it. You yielded to the devil and chose to do it. We can't be playing the blame shifting game. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. I call heaven and earth the record this day against you that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. God wants us to choose the right thing. And your choices determine what you're, what you're going to get. God does not usurp authority over your will. You have a free will and you can choose whatever you want. And we can never say again that the devil made me do it. No, we've got to own up to our own mistakes if we have we made wrong choices. Then we confess our sin and repent. Same time, we can't think the devil's just running, running me to do, causing me to do all these evil things because of the demons in me. No, this is a man who had a legion of demons. He was out in the mountains and the tombs crying, cutting himself with stones, running around with no clothes on. He was totally out of his mind because of the demons. Yet, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. If this guy can run to Jesus and worship him, with a legion of demons that he had, 6,826 soldiers was a legion, <laughs> all these demons that were in him. You and I can come to Jesus regardless. We never can blame the devil. The devil influenced us, but we had to make the choice to yield to him and choose to do the things that he tells us that God, of course, doesn't want us to do. We see it again in Romans chapter 6. So never blame the devil or never blame God saying, why did you allow me to do this? God didn't allow you to do anything in the sense of the fact that he could have done something to stop it because he's given you a free will. He's told you what to do, but you have the choice. Romans 6, 16, look what it says. Know ye not to whom, that's a person, isn't it? You yield yourselves, that's you and me, servants to obey. His servants you are to whom, that person that you obey. Whether of sin, who would we be yielding to if we yield to sin? The devil producing death, or of obedience, which is yielding to God's word, or yielding to God, obeying him. Evidence that you yield to God is your obedience, see? Obedience shows that you're following him. Not just because I have a good attitude or I have good intentions. No, that doesn't make it. Obedience unto righteousness. So it all comes down to whom are you yielding to? We've got to make sure that we're yielding to God. Never blame God. He's never the problem whatsoever. We also must guard ourselves against the lawlessness. The lawlessness is coming stronger and stronger in the world. The Bible says evil men are going to wax worse and worse. And look what's going to happen before the end comes. You can see it happen in society now. People don't want to pay attention to the rule of law. We got judges that are judicial activists that they could care less what the words, what the law says. They just do whatever they want to do, out of their own preferences, political preferences and beliefs. We got people that doesn't matter what what their word is; it means nothing. They're lawless. Matthew twenty four twelve. This is end time chapter because iniquity or lawlessness, anomia, shall abound. It's going to increase and multiply greatly. The love of many shall wax cold. Well, that's talking about the church because the love is agape love. And this is the many. Remember, the many are the ones that are walking the broad way instead of walking the narrow way. Therefore, you cannot let yourself be walking according to the course of this world, 
according to anything that's contrary to the word, you cannot be com compromising. It doesn't matter even if it's, it's lawful. You know, back in the early 1900s, the Christians rose up and got the 18th Amendment passed, which was prohibition and got rid of alcohol. You couldn't manufacture or sale or transport alcohol. Unfortunately, 14 years later, they got it reversed and repealed. It doesn't make it right. God doesn't want us to have anything to do with it. Marijuana now getting legalized in state after state. It doesn't matter if it gets legalized, it doesn't make it right. You want to have nothing to do with it. You got to set yourself, just because it's legal, big deal. So what? Is it something that God would want you to do? Absolutely not. And follow also, you got to be sure you're walking a straight and narrow. Don't be following the crowd because everybody's doing it. That's a mistake. Exodus 23.2 says, you shall not follow a multitude to do evil. It's in the, the uh, like I said, I don't have it up here, but it's a New King James Version. It says, do not follow the crowd to do evil. You can't be following the crowd or what everybody else is doing. You've got to follow the straight and narrow. You'll make a mistake. You've got to choose. Don't be compromising. Choose to do what is right in the sight of the Lord. Don't let yourself be influenced by others. We even see a statement over in 1 Corinthians. Chapter 6, verse 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the authority, is what it means, of any. You've got to make sure you're only walking in line with God's Word. And just because it seems like it's okay, we cannot follow those ways. The devil also try to bring up your past, again, and say that, well, because of your past, God can never use you, or he's not going to do this, or not going to do that. Don't listen to those lies. Look what it says about Saul. How about Saul's past, who was Paul? Here's when there were throwing Stephen out, and they were about to stone him. They stoned him, and who was there at the young man's feet? Whose, the clothes were laid, whose name was Saul. Saul was there. Like, what was Saul all about? Saul was consenting unto his death. He was causing the Christians to be killed. In verse 3, Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering to every house and hailing men and women, committing them to prison, dragging them to prison. He was supposedly following the law. <laughs> As a Pharisee of Pharisee, Hebrew of Hebrews, you know. He was put, putting people in prison, doing evil. And he was so zealous to do evil, Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. He's going to, well, I'm going to go to the next city, I'm going to bring all these Christians and lock them up. He was crazy. In fact, he even testified in Galatians verse 13. You've heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I perse persecuted the church of God and wasted it. That's what he did. And I profit in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. And yet he was totally deceived. Well, many people out there in the world, they really believe what they are doing is right, and they're totally deceived and used of the devil. That's why we got to keep praying for them to come to the place of getting born again. Well, how about him? He got converted. And then his testimony is, after he gets converted, does that mean because he did all these bad things it was, it was over for him? No. Yeah, this is testimony in 1 Timothy 1.13. Who was before a blasphemer, a persecutor, injurious. But he said, but I have attained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. He didn't know what he was doing. The grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Hey, I've done some of the worst stuff, he's saying. How be it? 
For this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Christ Jesus might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them that should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. God is gracious in mercy. Your past is your past. It is gone. The devil will bring up things of you even before you're born again and bring thoughts. You cast them down. Try to tell you that you're not worthy to, for God to do this and do that. Well, give up. You might as well just go and do all these sinful things and walk in the ways of the world because look what you did in the past. Forget about the past. God has remembered your sins and iniquities no more. Your past is not too bad for God to use you. Look what he did with Saul. He's the guy who was the top, top one who wrote most of the New Testament. He arose following the way of the Lord, and God used him mightily even though he was a very evil person before. Ah, the devil say, well, you're never going to be happy. Have you ever told you that one? He's a liar. Don't listen. You're listening to the wrong voice. Who's going to produce happiness and blessing? The Lord. Psalms 144, verse 15. Happy is that people. That is in such a case, you happy is that people whose God is the Lord. If you get walking with the Lord, you will have happiness and blessing and peace. The reason many people is they look at their circumstances instead of getting their eyes upon the Lord. That's a mistake. It goes on in verse one, chapter 146, verse 5. You can be happy and blessed. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. If you're letting yourself be sorrow, down, sad, you're giving place to the devil, his thoughts that he's beating you up on. You should keep a rejoicing spirit about you at all times. Proverbs 3.13, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. The more that you grow in the understanding and get wisdom, knowing the ways of the Lord and walking in his ways and have a personal fellowship with him, it'll produce that in the inside of, on the inside of you. Proverbs 16, verse 20. He that handles a matter wisely shall find good. And whoso trusts in the Lord, happy is he. You trust in the Lord, you're going to be happy. God's going to bless you. He's going to bring great things forth in your life. Of course, also, the Bible says in Proverbs 28, verse 14, happy is the man that fears always because he's not going to walk in the ways of sin and get beat up by the devil. But you harden your heart, you're going to fall into mischief. Do not let your heart get hardened against situations or against people or this or that. You are going to fall into all kinds of problems in your life. Also, whether you realize it or not, keeping the word is not bondage. It but produces happiness and blessing. Proverbs 29, 18. Where there's no vision... The people perish, but he that keeps the law, happy is he. The one who's keeping the law, and we keep the law of the New Testament. As you're keeping the commandments of the Lord, it produces God's happiness and blessing in you. Also, happiness is for you who will receive correction. You say, well, I didn't think the correction will make me happy. Well, it will, because it will keep you away from walking in destruction. Job 5.17, Behold, happy is the man whom God corrects. Therefore, despise not the chase in the Almighty. You're going to be happy because he kept you off the wrong road or he got you out of the wrong path that so was leading you down to destruction. So be happy that he got you out of it. We need to have ourselves tuned in. Uh, the devil will come to you and say, Well, you're never going to change. You're always going to be the same way. He's a liar. The promise of God is that God will change you. If you do what he says, of course. 2 Corinthians 3.18 We all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. God's going to change you into the very presence, in the very image of Jesus Christ through the Word working in you. You've got to make sure that you're walking uprightly before him, of course, in the fear of the Lord. Now, why don't people have changes then, if God says he'll change people? 
It's because they haven't done what he told them to do. If you're not doing the word, you won't be changed. If you don't have the fear of God, you won't be changed. Look what he says in verse Psalms 55, 19. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old. Selah. Because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. Change is what repentance is all about. Change your mind. Change your ways. We need to have true repentance in our life. Many people say, well, you, you, you'll never repent. I'll never repent. I'll really never see the big changes. I got the same old problem. I've been battling it forever. Hey, God will set you free. You can change. God will bring you out of that to repentance. You don't have to continue to fall back into it. If you will do the word and you will start doing everything he says, including casting out the demons and getting the word before you, the power of God will change you. You need to trust in it and believe in it. Romans 2, 2, 4, last part says, the goodness of God leads you to repentance. It's God's goodness. But you know, you've got to put him Lord. You've got to make him Lord of all. You can't have your brand of Christianity on your terms. You've got to put the word of God first place and do what he says. There is a necessity of true repentance in our life. In the Old Testament, they couldn't overcome sin. Acts 17.30 says the times of this ignorance, of their lack of knowledge because they, they, they weren't born again, God winked at. But now, in the New Testament, he commands all men everywhere to repent. If you'll submit to the commands of God, God will change everything. So don't believe the lie that says, oh, I can't overcome this problem. He's a liar. Quit listening to the lies. You will change if you will do. Because who's going to do the changing? God's going to do it through his word, but you have a part to play by choosing to obey what he tells you to do. He's not going to make you change. You have a part to play. But remember, it's God's word that does all these things in you. We also know is you really need to take a good look at what you're doing if there's areas where you need to change from. 2 Corinthians 7.10 For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of. The sorrow of the world works death. Just sorrow of the world because I got caught or I have this problem or I don't like the situation, you know. No, we need a godly sorrow before God that it was the wrong thing to do. Not because of the situation we got in. Or we've seen the effects of the sin. Godly sorrow, it must be a sorrow before God that works real repentance. And what will it produce? It'll produce the salvation of the Lord, your deliverance, your victory, your freedom, bringing you out of bondage. That's what God wants in every single person's life. But it is going to have to be shown by your actions, of course. You're going to have to do what the Word says. If you're resistant, you're going to go nowhere. Acts 26, verse 20, we do have to cooperate. He said, He first showed them unto, unto them of Damascus and Jerusalem through all the coasts of Judea and to the Gentiles, then that they should repent, change their mind, turn to God, get our eyes on Him, put His word first place, do works, meet or worthy or showing forth repentance. Your works, your actions. You can't say, I repent and not do what God says. That's just a bunch of wasted hot air. If you really repent, you're going to turn to God. You're going to get his word in you. That's why many people try to cast out the demons for their problem, but they don't get the word in them to deal with them, to come to the place of repentance and have the word in them, which is what's going to produce the change in their life so that they turn away from it and never fall back into it. Yes, you need to cast out the demons, but repentance is the name of the game. Confess your sin, repent, turn, get right, start making the right walk, and casting out the demons that are trying to drive you to do evil things. But you're going to have to do the works, showing forth your repentance by acting on the word and walking it out and doing the things that God says. Look at what he even says in Revelation 2 and 3 to the churches. And this is relevant for all of us because Revelation 2 and 3 is talking about the judgment that comes on the church in the end because the judgment comes to the church before it comes to the world. So these principles are so. Revelation 2, 
He talks about in verse 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Are there areas where you once were walking, but you're not anymore, and you've fallen away? And repent, and do the first works. Else I'll come unto thee quickly and remove my candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. So don't ever let the devil tell you you can't repent or you can't get things back. You can. You need to choose to. God will enable you to, but you can do it. Don't believe the lie. Don't give place to that. Verse 16. Here is where these guys were holding these evil doctrines. Doctrines of Nicolaitans and sacrificing the idols, committing fornication, doing all these evil things. Repent or else I'll come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. They're going to be seeing judgments come. Verse 21. Here he's talking about Jezebel, teaching, seducing, commit fornication, eating things, sacrificed idols, compromise. I gave her space to repent of her fornication. She repented not. God always gives you space to repent of your sins. He doesn't, he's not on you right away. But if you don't do it, after he's continually after you. Behold, I'll cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds, of their works, of their walk. That's why. How do you see real repentance? You're going to have the walk, walking and working, the things that God says. Words mean nothing. A lot of people have the talk, but they don't have the walk. The walk shows what you are. That's why God knows you by your fruit. That's why he says, I know your works, I know your works, I know your works, I know your works. That shows whether you're the real deal or not, or whether you just gave a bunch of lip service. And they're going to be cast into the great tribulation. Huh, they're not going to be delivered. They're going to be in trouble. They're not going to be protected. They're going to be in big trouble. Revelation 3.3. 3. Remember how thou hast received. Yeah, you heard the word once and you make right choices and somehow you're not doing it anymore. And heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I'll come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour shall come upon thee. This is the one at Sardis, remember, where he said, I had a few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments. They shall walk with me in white for they're worthy. We talked about walking worthy before the Lord, how important it is. It's essential. We can't defile our garments. God wants all sin out of your life. He wants you to be holy. He's commanded you to be holy. And he will produce that in your life as you do what he says. Absolutely. He that overcomes or conquers and over carries off the victory, which is what you and I are expected to do and can do because we're more than conquerors, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. That's how you get the white raiment, the white clo the clothing, the righteousness on. And I'll not blot out his name out of the book of life. What does that imply? You could have your name blotted out. He just says, I'm not going to do it. But I'll confess his name before my father and before his angels. Real repentance. Don't ever listen to the devil and let him tell you that you cannot repent. Remember the guys that were lukewarm? Laodicea? I know thy works. It wasn't their attitude or thoughts. It was their works. Your actions show forth where your heart is. That you're neither cold nor hot. I would that they were cold or hot. So because you're lukewarm, which is what? Because your works, you're going to get spewed out of the mouth. It's not just an attitude of heart. It's works. What you do, which shows forth a right attitude of heart. I'm going to spew you out of the mouth. Those guys are not saved. They're in trouble. What's he say to them? As many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. What does God say? Be zealous and turn from everything that's not of the Lord in your life. Conquer the devil's lies and attacks against you and don't let him have place anymore. It's time to put the devil underfoot so you do not listen to his lies and you do not let his works ever be accomplished in your life. He's a liar. Have the devil come along and say, oh, you're not going to prosper. He's a liar. God wants you to prosper. You've got to meet the conditions. Psalms 1.1 1, 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Are you listening to counsel of ungodly? You're going to get in trouble. Stands in the way of sinners? You're going to be in trouble. Sits in the seat of the scornful? You're in trouble. 
but his delights in the law of the Lord. Aha, my eyes are on the word. His law does he meditate day and night. Fill yourself with the word continually throughout the day. Meditate on it. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. Ah, fruit shows, he knows you by your fruits. His leaf also shall not wither, no withering. And whatsoever he do, does shall prosper. God will prosper everything that you do if you'll meet the conditions. We've got to walk the walk. You can't let the devil get to you and pull you down. All the lies of the devil are trying to get you away from the way of the Lord. Second Chronicles 26, 5. He sought God in the days of Zechariah. He had understanding of the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. God will prosper you in your life as long as you seek the Lord. You quit seeking the Lord, you're not going to prosper. You're going to seek him. And we talked about that on Sunday night, about how you seek, seek the Lord acceptably. It's not on your terms. It's on his word. And if you don't walk that way, you are not going to see God's prosperity come forth in your life. Now, if you're going to prosper, most people just well, always want my finances and, uh, you know, I want to see health and all these good things. Well, it does have some conditions. Third John, verse 2. Beloved, I wish, which means I pray, it's the word for pray, Above, which really means concerning, is the Greek word peri, means concerning. I pray concerning all things that you may prosper and be in health. That's what God's will is. But notice, even as thy soul prospers, in the measure that your soul's prospering is the measure that your overall prosperity and health is going to come forth. Because your soul, if it's messed up, it's going to cause you all kinds of problems. So that's where you sin. That's what opens the door for all kinds of physical problems and hindrances to prosperity. That's why you've got to get your soul in line. Will, intellect, and emotions. Choose right. Think right. Govern those emotions. Put the word first place so you walk and get healed and restored in the soulish area so you're walking uprightly. Get your mind renewed so you're thinking correctly. That is so important. God wants to bless you. And you've got the promise that he will prosper you. So don't believe this that he won't prosper you. And don't look at the world economy out there and think you can't be prosper. God will prosper you in the midst of whatever. Deuteronomy 29.9 Keep therefore the words of this covenant, do them, that you may prosper in all that you do. God will get you a job when others can't get a job. And we've seen that. People that started praying the job prayer, started seeing, couldn't get any interviews, and all of a sudden they got interviews and got good jobs. God opens it up. You keep the word of the covenant and do them, you'll prosper in all that you do. We've got to walk in his ways. Don't listen to any lies. Oh, the devil come along and say, well, God's not here to help you. Don't listen to that. Is that the truth? No, it's a lie. Everything the devil brings is a lie. Psalms 3.1, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. So, you can conquer them all. Many there be which say in my soul, there's no help for him and God. Don't listen to it. He's a liar. This is the devil. Many will say, oh, people come out and say, tell you all kind of lies from all over the place. They're liars. You cannot listen to those. God is your help and your victory. Psalms 33, verse 20. Wherever you need help in, you need to look to him. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. You need to wait on Him. Have a confident expectancy waiting on Him to, for Him to bring forth what He just promises and bring Him to pass in your life. you got some troubles that have come against you. Psalms 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Yes. Look to God. Don't try to do it, figure it all out yourself. Find out what God wants you to do and do it. Deal with the sin. Get this word in you. Get the wisdom, understanding. Start walking in the way of the Lord. Psalms 121, verse 2. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will help you. He will help you in whatever the situation is. And of course, 
you're also going to conquer all the enemies that are arrayed against you. We see in Psalms 124, verse 7, Our souls escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. That's the enemy that took you captive in your soul. The snare is broken and we're escaped. We got out of the bondage. How do we get that way? Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We use the name of Jesus and conquered the enemies. We come out from the bondage of the enemies against us. Regardless of what the situation is, you've got to know that God's your help. Anything that tries to turn you away from looking to God, your help is the devil coming to you. Feelings try to get to you. Things, thoughts come and try to overwhelm you. Negative stuff comes at you. You cast it down. Do not give place to it. Isaiah 41.10 Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. God will help you, whatever you have need of. Yea, I'll uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. God's ready to help you. In the New Testament, the door is wide open, if you're right with God, to come and get His help. As you learn how to pray accurately, in line with the Word, look what it says. Hebrews 4, 16, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain, take hold, lambano of mercy, and find grace, his favor, to help in time of need. God's favor will be towards you as you walk in line with his word to help you in your situation. He wants to bring you out of it. And the devil will come and bring a lie to you and say, well, you've got all these inherited generational things, you're never going to get out of them. You're just going to be like mom or dad or grandparents or all these bondages, and that's the way it's going to be. He's a liar. It is true that you are affected by them. You do have to know that. Lamentations 5, 7. Our fathers have sinned and are not. I mean, they passed on. And we've borne their iniquities. we got the problems that have come because of inherited generational iniquity curses. And we know that that's been <coughs> working down the road in three, four generations. Numbers 14, verse 18. The Lord is long-suffering of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation. He is a just God. So we have inherited generational iniquity curses coming from the sins of the forefathers from three and four generations. <coughs> Parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and even great-great-grandparents have affected you. Well, does that mean well, you're always going to be like that way and you never can get out of it? No, that's a, that we can absolutely get free of everything because they're all enforced by demonic spirits. We have dominion over all demons and we can cast them all out. But even in the Old Testament, these guys, look at the testimony that we see here. We see those that were in bondage and we see those ones that come out of it. 1 Kings 14, 22. Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord provoked them to jealousy where their sins which they done committed had committed above all that their fathers had done. They even got worse. What do we see is happening in the generations in modern day? Hasn't each generation gotten worse and worse and the sins more blatant and crazy and worse and worse? Because they haven't walked in the ways of the Lord and those curses are multiplying <laughs> and they're getting worse and worse. Absolutely. 2 Kings 15 Verse 9, he did that that was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his father had done. Well, why did he do that? He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam. He didn't depart from sin. If you don't depart from sin, you will walk in that same way whatsoever. Whether you have good intentions or not, you will follow after the same thing. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 14. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but they hardened their necks, like to the necks of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. They rejected his statutes, his covenant that he made with their fathers and testimonies he testified against them. They followed vanity, became vain, went after the heathen that were round about them, concerning whom the Lord had charged them they should not do like them. They left all the commandments of the Lord their God. And then they got off and making molten images, calves, a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal. These guys went totally 
off track who were once following after the way of the Lord. See, the Lord testified. This is Israel. Testified against them. He said, turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments. So how are you going to overcome those things that have been in your generations? You've got to get the word in you. That's the answer. And start following the commandments of the Lord and start doing the things that God says and being obedient to what he tells you to do. It's mandatory. You follow the commandments of the Lord, you start hearing what he tells you to do, he'll bring you out of the bondage. Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse thir chapter 30, verse 7. Look what he says. Be, ye not, be not ye like your fathers and like your brethren. But you don't have to be like them. Who trespassed against the Lord God of their fathers, who therefore gave them up to desolation, as you see. That's what they ended up getting. Be not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord. What's the answer? You've got to yield yourself to the Lord. You've got to enter into his sanctuary, which he has sanctified forever. You've got to come in to be holy before the Lord and serve the Lord your God. You serve him. So you yield yourself. You enter into his holiness by walking in line with his word. You serve the Lord that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. For if you turn again unto the Lord true repentance. Your brethren, your children shall find compassion before them that lead them captive so that they come again into the land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful. He will not turn away his face from you if you return unto him. God's grace and mercy is available for you. That's the favor of God and the love of God in action. His mercies are new every morning and he will bring you out of all those bondages. So we have to quit giving place to sin. You give place to sin, regardless of whether it's from inheritance or where it's from, you're going to allow the enemy to work against you. Ephesians 4, verse 27 says, Neither give place to the devil. You don't have to give place to him. He does not have to have influence in your life. You can conquer all his lies. You've got to take every thought captive and think on good things. You've got to yield yourself to the Lord. And you need to start casting out these demons and driving them out. All these evil spirits that have come in from inheritance, they need to be eliminated. What is the first sign following the believer after they get born again? These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. God wants you to cast out the demons to get rid of them that have come in from inheritance, your own sins and victimization, clean house. At the same time, make all the changes to conquer all of his attacks by yielding with the sin areas, confessing sin, repenting, absolute change, God conquering all these lying thoughts that come against you that keep on peppering you over past things. Do not let the devil have place in your life. Rise up and do the things he wants you to do. One of the things for sure, you've got to really learn to govern your mind. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought. An evil thought comes, you cast it down. A thought about doing evil, cast it down. A thought about going in the way of the world, you cast it down. Feelings about the flesh, you know, doing something, you cast it down. Any thought that comes about your past, cast it down. I'm not, you're not good enough, God didn't care about you, he won't help you, all these lies, you cast it down. But then what else do you do? You get the word in you. You've got to bring it in line with the obedience of Christ. Well, what's the obedience of Christ? The word. You need the word in you that answers it. As we've given you in many places here, the answer, he's your help. He's not going to help you. You get the scriptures out. Bing, 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 bing. Yes, he is my help. The Lord is my help. He will help me in time of trouble. He's my help and my shield. He's the one present help in a time of trouble, whatever the situation is. You get the word to conquer the enemies. That's why it says having a readiness, being prepared and ready to revenge all disobedience, which is the devil's attacks. When your obedience is fulfilled, there is a part for you to play. The obedience to cast down the thoughts, bring into captivity every thought in line with the word, replace it with the word, get the word, there's a truth in you, so you think on the word, and you will conquer the lies of the devil. See what those guys do, remember? They change the truth into a lie. And the devil brought a lie. And they believe the lie. You've got to change the lie into the truth. 
The lie that's been coming at you, you change it in the truth. Where do you find that? In the Word. That's the answer. If you will change all the lies that come against you into the truth and have put the Word first place, cast out all the demons, truly come in line with dealing with all the sin, true repentance, working what He says, doing the Word, having works, showing forth the fruit in your life, you'll overcome everything and you're going to get these things put underfoot. It's time to conquer all the lies of the devil that have come against you that keep trying to wear you down and pull you down and keep coming up over and over, try to get you to go the same old direction, fall this way, you know, turn this way and that way. No, God wants you to walk the straight and narrow, no more yielding to the devil whatsoever. Come in line with his word. Conquer all the lies of the devil against you. God will turn everything around and you will see God's blessings in your life. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the truth. I will get my mind renewed to the truth. Satan is a liar. He changes truths into lies and tries to deceive me with his lies that he brings against me. I will not believe any lies that he brings against me that are contrary to the word. I will cast them down. I will replace them with the truth of the word. I will keep my eyes upon the word of God. And I will cast out all the evil spirits in every area of my life. And I will guard myself so I sin no more, so no worse thing comes back. I will not allow myself to walk in any previous ways of sin. I will not follow the sins of the forefathers. I will get the word. I will not be like them. I will walk in line with the word. I will do what is right. And I will cast out the spirits. And I will conquer all the lies of the devil that have brought me into bondage. I'm coming out of bondage. I'm coming into liberty, into freedom. And I will not let the enemy pull me down any longer. Any lies. I will get the word that is the answer. I will change the lie into the truth. And I will have that truth established in me. As I continue in the word and show forth by my works that I'm a true disciple, I will know the truth. And the truth will make me free. Thank you, Lord for bringing me into victory and overcoming and conquering all the lies of the devil against me in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. These are just some of the things, the common ones that come against people. Make a list of the lies the devil brings against you that, you that keep on trying to pull you down and get the scriptures and start getting that word in you and be ready, prepared to conquer every lie that he brings against you. And make sure you're doing the word so you have the works, so you show forth the real repentance by your work, by your fruit. And cast out all those demons that have come in from that and make sure that you are walking in line with the word of God from then on and God will get you victory. He didn't remember your sins anymore. He's going to start blessing you. You can be happy. You can be prosperous. You can be blessed. You can be at peace. You can be conquering everything and never yielding to him ever again in your life. That is the gospel, the power of God that will bring victory for you in your life. Father, I thank you for all that you brought forth. Thank you that we are going to conquer all these lies of the devil. We're not going to let anything pull us down. No more giving place to any of these lies. We're replacing them with the truth. We thank you that we will walk in the truth and I thank you that each one of us are going to deal with any and all lies that come against us and we're going to eliminate them and put them underfoot. Thank you for establishing us in the truth as we're hearers and doers of the word. We do truth, we come to the light and as we do the word, we'll not be those that are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. No, we'll be those that continue in the word. We will become true disciples. We will know the truth and the truth will make us free. Thank you, Father, for accomplishing this in every single person's life. In Jesus' name, amen.